Good morning and welcome to another daily devotional here in Greenwood Street Presbyterian Church. You're very welcome uh, as you join with us this morning for another uh, daily devotion in the Word of God. Let's commence our time with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for another day in your grace and we praise you that you are a God of grace. Scripture reminds us that it is by grace we have been saved through faith. And this not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And we pray that as we turn to your word this morning, that the Holy Spirit of God would enable us to understand it, and that that same Holy Spirit of God would enable us to obey it, and to live out your word in our lives, that we might be seen to be your children in a day in which many people have turned their backs upon the things of God and upon the authority of Scripture. So be with us now as we turn to your word, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to read this morning from uh, Psalm 1, the first Psalm. Let us hear the word of God. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Amen. And God will add his blessing to this reading from his word. This psalm has become known as the psalm of the two ways, the way of the righteous and the way of the wicked. Basically, I suppose it's a summary of the whole of scripture and indeed it is a summary of the whole of life there are only two ways for mankind there's god's way and there's man's way we read a lot in scripture about man's way when he turns away from the way of the lord and away from the living god and in, in proverbs chapter 14 we read there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. And conversely, in John chapter 14 and verse 6, we hear those words of Jesus when he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And in these strange days of COVID, indeed unique days, I think it is important that we know that we're in the right way, that we're in God's way. We're in the way of Christ, the way of the cross. And it's a great comfort for those of us who know and love him to know that God is with us in these strange days. Um, we read here in verse 6, For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. When you're in Christ, when you're one of God's children, God, as it were, oversees your way. In Second Chronicles we read, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Isn't it amazing that regardless of where we are, regardless of our situation, regardless of any predicament, we may find ourselves in. He knows our circumstances. He knows that predicament. And furthermore, we have the assurance to know that whatever the situation, that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. And not only is that true for the things of this life, but when we die, or should he appear, then our joy will be complete in glory, in him. 
These are the great assurances that belong to the Christian. And it's important that we remind ourselves of these things when the future is so uncertain, when the future is being determined by man day by day on a different level. It's important for us to know that we're in God's hands and that he sees and knows our way. But the psalmist says the other side of this coin, if you like, is not so the wicked. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. And in verse 6, the way of the wicked will perish. All those, you see, who have rejected God's gracious offer of salvation in Christ, that offer that is um, summarized in, in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Notice, those who believe in him shall not perish. God does not want the wicked to perish, if you like. He doesn't want the sinner to perish, but that's exactly what will happen if they reject his gracious offer of salvation. God wants the sinner to repent and to believe. Peter reminds us of that in his second letter. He says he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. My friend, if you're listening to this uh, devotional this morning, don't be a fool. Don't remain in your sin. Repent of your sin and believe. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. There is a day coming when Christ shall return to this earth, when he will not be coming on a donkey, on the foal of an ass. He'll not be coming as saviour. He'll not be coming as redeemer. He will be coming as a returning triumphant king. And when he comes, that will signal the end of the day of grace. Thankfully, we're still in that day of grace. Today is a day of grace. And today is another opportunity for the sinner to repent and believe. Yes, the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. What a comfort to know that to those of us who are in Christ. But we must always remember that the way of the wicked will perish. Let us be continually in prayer for those who are outside of Christ, that even in these days of so much uncertainty, that they might repent and believe and cause rejoicing among the angels in heaven over that one sinner who repents and believes in Jesus Christ and is added to the number of his church. For we ask it in his name. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we, we thank you again for the truth of your word. We thank you that your word is always relevant. It's as relevant to us today as it was to the psalmist who wrote it almost 3,000 years ago. And we pray, Lord God, that as we absorb your word into our minds, that we might also, by your grace, absorb it into our hearts and believe its truth and live our lives in accordance with its promises. Help us, your children, to be faithful in these days, faithful in prayer, praying for the sinner, praying for the ongoing work of the gospel, and praying that you would be pleased to add to our number those who are being saved. We continue to pray for those in need today. Pray for those who are unwell. Pray for those who are in hospital. We pray for those in nursing or residential care. We pray that your hand would be upon them to heal and restore. We continue to pray for all who labour in our health service. We continue to pray for all who labour in our education. Pray your blessing upon them. Grant them success in all of their labours. And we pray that in these days we would have the joy of seeing sinners coming to Jesus Christ, repenting of their sin and being added to our number. For we ask it in Jesus' name. 
and we pray for his sake. Amen.